This is Peter Dunn. Hi. This I'm is Larry Peter. Herzog, and I'm Bruce Greenwood. Yeah, that works. Together, we did uh, this series called Nowhere Man about 10 years ago, it turns out. We were talking about the wardrobe. Yeah. Or weren't we? What would you like to say about that? So unforgiving. It's probably the best wardrobe I've ever had because it just matches what I generally wear at home. Not to say that that's inherently good or anything. It just matches my taste, which is absent for the most part. I remember, um, you know, casting you seemed to be easy. The shrimp roll guy in this scene who goes dogging you. Do you remember that? Yes, for weeks. No, well, actually, oh, he, he was—he wasn't really an actor, was he? I think he was, but he, you know, the poor—the poor guy only had had to come in and read one line. Whoever was right, reading for that role, and this guy came in and blew the one line. And it was so funny, <laughs> and he, it made an impression. So, so, he, so you we hired him? We hired him? Yeah. yeah. I mean, the guy yeah. comes in, does one line, blows it, and he gets the gig. Yeah. And his think line, that makes me feel? His line was one word. It was sushi. You know? Yeah, wow. sushi. And I Two think syllables, though. <laughs> yeah. And here we are at Chasen's before. Yeah, this, was, this is Chasen's while it was still Chasen's, right? Well, it was closed, well, it was closed I think, it was just but it was closed. Before, before, they, they it before they put it in the grocery store. Right. They let us come in. And I was so grateful at that time that that the, you had the character smoke, right? Cause right. I thought, yes. Sir. And then oh, you fantastic. gave me a hard time. I'm not smoke. smoking it. Hey, look at after doing the whole pile, you realize I, I don't want to play a guy that smokes because he got to smoke, <laughs> butt after butt after butt, and you right. end up smoking five packs a day. It becomes about the cigarette suddenly in the scene. Well, also you get sick. Like, <laughs> I, you know, when I had to smoke for a flashback, right? Whatever it was, eight months later. I, had to, I went out and hurled. But that's okay because I wasn't there. You were in Portland. I was in London. Yeah, so it didn't matter. If you hurl course, off you camera, I don't care. Yeah, you don't really care. Yeah, You just care that I come back to camera on time. Now, it's interesting, a few little anecdotes in, in this. It, it, first of all, some people notice, some people don't. But after your erasure, after you go to the men's room and come back, mm -hmm. the place is lit entirely differently. Uh, the music that's playing on the piano in the background recurs throughout the pilot, mm -hmm. especially towards the end. And um, Your father was miserable. and someone laughing. You okay? So this is the last she's ever going to be nice to you. Yeah. Clearly, I'm okay. Well, the last time I can ever quite trust her. Trust her, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're coming up to going into the, going to have a smoke in the can. Yeah, see, the lighting here is sort of misty and who's the DP? Thirsty. On this, it was On this Izzy. One. What was it? Man Mankowski. Is Isidore Mankowski. Remember the little petite guy with big shaggy white tube? And a oh, yeah, handlebar, yeah, and a handlebar yeah. mustache. That's yeah. Like, and he yeah. was fast as a bullet. That guy could put two flashlights That's up right. and have a scene lit. He, I thought he did a great job. We had some, the light was so low that some of the scenes had some real narrow depth of focus. Really? But yeah, we had that whole thing with Bruce and Ted. When oh, Bruce yeah. is in bed, that, that scene had some <clears throat> soft stuff that Can't we. I believe you remember all this stuff. I just, you know, I just look at it and I go, uh, just such bad acting, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's very difficult to watch and not go, Mama Mia, what are you doing? But would you do that with anything? Or are you going to watch all your stuff 10 years later and say, oh, I'm better now? I do. Or it's yeah, generally I do. Okay. I, I, well, I, what I, when I watch something that's old, I say to myself, I must be better now. So here's, here's Steve. You must be better. I must be better now. I can't be this bad now. But, OK, yeah. well, we keep saying you're good, so. Yeah, well, I better sh I'll shut up and yeah. let you guys talk. She's not at our table. I'm sorry, sir. I really don't know who you're talking about. <laughs> sir, what are you kidding? We, we were just. I had no idea when we were shooting this. Two like, laps, mean, it's it's two a laps. year in Portland, never seeing the sun, and <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Right, Charney said that Booth reserved. Going to work at 6 a.m. on a Monday and coming home at 7 a.m. on a Saturday. That's right. Sleeping all of Saturday. That's right. You know, saying hello to your wife on Sunday for Sunday breakfast, and then going back to the, the next week's script. It was the worst year for rain. Hundred year rain. Do you remember the day that the, until this year here it was all icy up there? And you, oh, the ice storm. And you walked into town with your golf shoes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because that fantastic. was the only way you could walk around town was having golf shoes. Yeah, I remember w so walking across this field where every blade of grass was as, sort of as big as my finger and yeah. crunched like broken crystal when you walked. Right. It was fantastic. I love that. It was town. a nowhere man town. Hey? It was a nowhere man town. It was kind of yeah, yeah. It became that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually, when I see this, it's, it is very nostalgic of Chasen's, you mm -hmm. know, which is now, uh, what is it? Uh, what's the name of this? What's the name is of it a restaurant or is no, it? It's no, a, it's a market. Bristol, Bristol Farms. Bristol Farms, yeah. Well, this is it. It's just sort of dawned on you that, that, I'm that not your as, wife is. I'm not as bright as I thought I was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
This, I'm actually, this next shot is probably the most moving shot in the whole movie from the top of the phone booth. Except for the very end, that cross, that crossroads. Mm -hmm. I can't believe you remember these shots. Well, was this I've something that we carried? The phone, phone booth? booth? Yeah, we must yeah, yeah. Have. Well, so according to Peter, you guys even in Portland carry the phone booth. Yeah, so you always have a phone booth. Yeah, right. It was the nowhere man phone booth. Yeah. You know, the flick we're doing now, we're carrying a, a tent for Antarctica, but what we have right. to put down is a massive tent twice as the size of the studio to hold it. It's nuts. It should be said that off camera through most of this pilot, there were people smoking cigars profusely and Toby running out trying to smoke one in between Izzy yeah, and Yeah, we were all, that was the cigar thing. That we were all into him. Thing, yeah, yeah, you kind of turned me on to him. And... Yeah, you remember you gave me a box of cigars and then you, I, just as I held my hands out, you took it back. You, do you remember that? You know what I'm gonna say, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Peter comes up to me and goes, a lot of the stuff you're doing is really good, but we're finding that your mouth is hanging open a lot. <laughs> Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. And your tongue is kind of there, and we don't know whether you're about to speak or whether you're, you've got a condition of some kind. So maybe, maybe close your mouth as often see? as you can. Yeah. There. See, I remembered yeah. what you told me. Oh. Maybe you thought you were the dog Newt, you know, with your mouth. I not believe. This is a good sequence. This yeah. is a, yeah. good, a good trick, right? The dream I had. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing. I've never been so happy to wake up. So oh, happy. now I remember what happens when she turns around. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Go get the paper. But you know what? The only remaining question I have is, who was the other guy? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how do you, okay, now it's a double dream, right? How do you get away with that? That's pretty. Yeah, Some again. of the episodes are really good. And, you know, again, there's that, there's that thing, yeah, instead of zooming or Moving the camera, you know, the jump, jump, jump. There's I love the this location. It looks so cool. It. This is in Pasadena, too, but I love this location. It yes, looks it is. So oh, yeah. Stark. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Well, this was quite early in the schedule. Yep, you get arrested here. Yeah, soon. I remember, too, in that arrest sequence, which follows this. Remember, we were losing light, and we were really cutting it close that night. Wasn't this quite early in the shooting schedule? I sort of <clears throat> vaguely remember this is one of the first bits we mm -hmm. shot. Yeah, you know. Before you know, before you know each other. And, oh yeah, right. This whole driving thing. Just cut the crap, okay? It's about the photograph, isn't it? Yeah, she flips you around a lot in this sequence, you know, and finally saying, okay. And it's like, ah, relief. And then just when you think you're there, she pulls it out from under you again. They told me that if I said anything, they'd kill you. Who? Who are they? I don't know. Some men. But who? Government, military, That's what did I they know. say? I didn't want to put you in this situation. See, so if you had the writer there, I could tell you she doesn't mean They're a word. They're watching me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. They're watching so you. Like earpieces like these. <laughs> Bruce, close your mouth. <laughs> close your mouth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. It was good advice. I'm sure. I'm, uh, I'm... It's interesting to me how Megan's character fascinated people so much because it was so strong what came across in this scene. Well, they never believed her either. Right, but people like, throughout the series exactly. then, yeah. who is she, and, and her betrayal is so huge right. in this pilot, right. over the arc of the pilot, that people just hated Allison, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's such It ruined a, her career. It's, <laughs> <laughs> she never I'm glad you'll be talking Didn't to she, her without me around. She either. went on to do um, mm -hmm. Millennium. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember yes. when she got the in call? Yeah. And remember when she got the call, actually, we were shooting in, uh, we were already shooting the series, but she was backlit behind this big sheet that they'd set up for a makeup thing, and I saw a shadow of her getting the news that she'd oh, got the show. Great. And it's all in silhouette. Yeah, all in silhouette. Cool. Spent, you know, <laughs> cartwheels. Yeah, just real, I mean, huge puppet show joy. Right? It was really it was fantastic. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't talk to me. Don't come to my house. But you just... What did you expect me to say? You're sick. You need help. She's lying. So we're going to, I think from here, we're going to Highland. Callaway this woman is my wife. Mental Institution, mm -hmm. which ended up being, that was on Highland, and that was uh, the foreign American Legion. Yep. American Legion. But I remember when Toby and I talking and talking and talking about what should this mental institution look like? Should we go the full Marat Saad route, or should we make it modern? 
This is great. Yeah, I remember we found this angel mm -hmm. lying around at the location. And it was Toby who said, really? let's hang that up. Oh, and this cat, what's yeah. this guy's name? Uh, Jay. Jay. Jay Underwood. Jay Underwood, man. Something like that, am I yes. right? Underwood, I don't know. Yeah. I think I've, you know, I've actually got his name in my little electronic thing. Well, the um, story he's about. He's a very cool guy. The story about Jay was this part of Eddie was the one we couldn't cast. Mm -hmm. We had you, we had Megan, we had like, you know, the, we had all the p things you thought would kill you to cast. We couldn't find this guy. And on the last day, there was a guy who read that I finally liked. But Toby felt I was grasping at straws, and maybe I was, I, I don't think so. But Jay came in, and he gave a very first nondescript read. It did nothing for us. But like many people, actors, they come in, and you can see they're not quite ready to get up and leave, but they don't know if they should because they took their shot. And But we said, what? what? What's on your mind? And he said, I just didn't feel good about it. I feel like I should do something. with. I feel I should sing it because it was mm -hmm. never written that way. And Toby's eyes just lit up, and he said, sing it. And there he went, you know. Yeah. I remember I was in the room for one take of this, mm -hmm. and Ted was so freaky in the room that I, once was enough, you know, I like, I gotta get out there. This is very moving. And once was a man named Tom. Tom. Eddie, Tom. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. Mm. Eddie, Tom. Eddie, Tom, he, he used to be so calm, and then they came and took his name. Now everything is gone. It's... Eddie, Eddie. Uh. Zick-nack, Patty, why give the dog a bone? As a viewer, you gotta go, this whole thing's gotta be in his mind. There's just not, this many people can't be somehow in the know. You have no idea what you're up against. Then tell me. Thanks. But death at your hands is a preferable alternative. How'd you get It's nice to see all that, all that gaffer's tape, because yeah. usually when bad guys are tied up, you know, it's, 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 the, like, it's the velvet rope, <laughs> right, you know, right. all those bad tie jobs in a chair. Like, there's probably not an actor in Hollywood that hasn't been tied up in a chair at one point, right. Right? Right. and hasn't clubbed somebody with a candlestick. That was all rigged, you know, we took the jacket, a different jacket, and opened it up, cut it, and then put the tape on it, so it just slipped over his head. <laughs> so, oh, really? So it's yeah. like the fake one. Right. Piece Otherwise, just, not, right. Yeah. Otherwise, it's a continuity nightmare with the yeah. tape. And, volunteered their names. And there you had your negatives all along. You, you actually stooped them big good there. And my mother. The negatives. So you pitched Sulfur the idea. You had two weeks to, to write like it. Like write a script. 12 maybe. days to shoot it. And a month later, you, you were, wrote it in, you were in, inside of two weeks, though. Probably something yeah. like that. Fortunately, there were almost no notes. Mm -hmm. They didn't understand it. Uh oh. So you had to smoke or this whole ending wouldn't have worked. You know, what are you gonna right. throw a piece of parsley there or something? Like I eat yeah, well, I'm know, a healthy guy. I know a lot of guys who carry parsley around. <laughs> it does come in here. I don't want to hear about it. Don't share now. There you go. This died. This is it. Yeah. Bruce has died. And that was in the credits, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I had fun doing that dive. Yeah, we cut this, uh, it, it looks so much, I mean it was a great explosion, but the way it was cut makes it look kind of it was great. But you see how different this look is? It goes, it's colorful, it's saturated yeah. compared to, so, and here comes the song again from yeah. what the guy was playing. Oh, where La Vie and Rose came from, but it, it ended up being effective. I remember we never got the shot of Bruce actually going up the stairs for later when he comes down, so we had to just cut. Right. And to give away, you know, because I think the magic of believing things is we actually had the mother's bedroom in a separate mm -hmm. structure yeah, that was garage. on this property in the That's garage. Right. And Craig, again, did an amazing job of making it look yeah, like it, was... it belonged in that house. 
Yeah, see, here you get a sense of what Rick does with light, too. I mean, but this is not Rick. This is smooth. This is, Who's this? This is Izzy. Again. Izzy. This is Izzy, okay. Only that one Because I'm shot. just thinking, wow, now it's rich again. Right, but this whole thing is richer than, than intentional. I think we did a little bit of that in post, too. Just cranked it up. Well, I can't wait to see some of the other episodes that Rick lit, because I remember really liking what he did. Yes. Some days are better than others. How did this happen? She came, uh, the mother came back in the Christmas episode. I mean, who hired you? Who paid you? At a dinner or something, yeah, right? Yeah, dinner. and it's so yeah. interesting, because I had seen her so often in shooting the pilot, <clears throat> cutting the pilot, and editing it, that when I actually saw her in the Christmas episode, I barely recognized her, because she wasn't lying down with tubes yeah, in her. Right, she looked right. like a totally different person. Mister, we can do it easy, or we can do it hard. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say anything, Bruce. Remember, you had your mouth open a lot, too. So let's not talk about this. Hey, I know, you know, it's, uh, you know, yeah. yeah this was Bernie, Mac and, was Bernie coming in and being. Hello, I'm Father Ralph. Completely. You don't believe a word this guy says in this. Sue tells me that Helen is your mother. You're from St. Anne's. Hello, Father. Helen, this young man has been telling us that he's your son. That was film. Mm. You said your mother couldn't stand you in chasing. Son. So she can't stand you here either. I was you know. surprised because... Well, that was, that was kind of an interesting vibe that you never really knew if the mother had... Really you know, denied him or had been yeah. Really liked him or not, you know? I can tell you she hated him. <laughs> My son is dead. I have... No, son. Hard to believe she was married to Dean Jones at one point. Stay back, stay back. Put, put the gun down, son. No, nobody means you any harm. I suppose that's what you said to Father Carney before you killed him. Father Carney had a heart. Is this attack. the first time? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you're, yeah. you're upset. You're confused. You don't know what you're saying. Let me have the gun. Hey, you can cut the phony father routine right now, Padre. I'm not buying. Oh, my God. Oh, Tommy. What are you, out of your mind? You're all in this together, aren't you? Every one of you got to my mother. You got to Father Carney. The police. How, oh, how far does this go? I'm completely guessing at the tone. I love it, though. I think this stuff really works. Everyone ever. Well, it may, you know. I mean, I, well, we're not really truly watching right, it. You know, right, we're not right, truly right, in it, right. so you don't know if it's right. I think so it's, it's kind of like watching isolated scenes. And I also so. love here, because there was some talk about it, that you yeah. fire only that shot. Which I think is much more real for mm -hmm. a guy who's not used to shooting at people. A gun goes off in a room that size. You shoot once over someone's head. Yeah, yeah. Problem, which I found pretty real. And see, this was where we didn't have you going down the stairs. But miraculously, you do arrive outside. Yeah, well, it works, it works better. Yeah, fine. You don't. Run. No, that's not a. Now you're good with the gun. Ah, oh, now good. he's got his. Yeah. <laughs> now you're really I know what I'm doing this now, the, yeah. yeah. This is I've fun. seen this Let's on see. TV. What if I shoot the tires out? You can tell your friends. They can't take it all. They can't take everything. They might get to everyone I ever met, but they won't get to me. I can feel the bounce there, don't you? Oh, I actually remember having fun doing a little bit of driving mm -hmm. here. First time the word. Oh, this is a cool location yeah. and cool use of lenses. And yeah, stuff. this shot, we, Peter and I were talking about this yeah. earlier, is everyone said, well, you're not going to let this whole shot run. You're going to cut into it, right, yeah. and shorten it. I went, nope. And it, it also, this sequence was one of the first cut because I remember we had, I had to start cutting right behind camera because right. the delivery sure, date yeah. was so close. And I think Andy, our editor, was working on the desert sequence, the crossroads at least. And it was slow it down, slow it down, slow it down. And I think this shot, yeah. and it plays at least in the other cut. I'm not sure about this cut, but in the, in the other cut. In your home cut. In my home cut, in the home theater version, the mm -hmm. producer's <laughs> cut. But four hour version. We played again instead of getting holding the shot was all this stuff happening on the radio, this montage. Right, yeah. And Levy and Rose comes back and the ball game and then Heather's laugh or they don't know that that's who it is. And, and it's great. It was great just to not do it. Let that shot right. play, make well, look you at sit it. it comes in a big, you know. Right, but people thought it would be cut in earlier. You would have ended the shot, though. You 
Why no, you office, yeah, yeah, it's nice. But you say, no, you want people to sit here. It's part of the building the tension. We got so, look at the clouds, got so lucky with the weather. Yeah. Because it looks like the Midwest. I mean, it just looks. I love this car. Remember, we had the big dog in this car yes. with this guy, and the dog, like, loved this guy. He could barely, like, get, do his lines without this dog. <laughs> the dog's bigger than he is. It was very funny. All right, yeah. Wendy! <laughs> See? See how it works? Right. It plays right wow, into the... genius. I love this guy. I love this dog started, well, like, putting his head on the guy's shoulder. <laughs> Where are you going? That way. Well, that's where I'm going. Right, here we go. Ah, uh, oh, yes. Dun, 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 dun. See the dog. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah, they had to convince me that you were sp he was supposed to drive off before his line, and Peter was saying, we're never going to get that to happen. So can he just say his line? No, it's art. It's perfect. It's brilliant. Don't change a thing. But we, production one, as always. I ain't got it all day, mister. I said I just dug about this guy's face. It looks yeah. so 1940s or yeah, something. Yeah. Yeah. You won't pass up this ride. Not too much traffic out this way. <laughs> now Tom's kind of worried about being taken off into a... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hmm. We're yeah. a party, me and you, yeah. and the dog. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's like, yeah. He's playing, <laughs> Tell me about bending over like, great That's dog funny. though. Good, big mastiff. <laughs> great dog. Great location, Peter. Just, uh, I mean, it was written as a crossroads, but we actually found it. Amazing. It's not there anymore. It's gone, yes. There's yeah. a Denny's and a, yeah. you know, a hill. Probably. No more empty crossroads in this no. state. Not in this hemisphere. This is where you get to see your bump in the crane shop, but right. we did get those clouds, which was just too cool to pass up. Yeah. This is the fork in the road that Yogi Berra always talks about. Right. So What's his line about the fork in the road? Take it when you come to the fork <laughs> in the road. Right. It looks like get forked or... No. No. It's great, though. It's still, I mean, you know, the idea that this pilot leaves this poor guy out in the middle of nowhere sitting there did turn out to be yeah, very he compelling. Yeah, he could have gone anywhere.